Arriving on Mars weakened and enfeebled will be at best pointless and at worst fatal. This is a fact. I'm not threatening you. Watching Scott Kelly struggle to walk after a year in space should be a sobering reminder to those making plans to travel to Mars. In spite of an extensive exercise regimen and the best treatment that 50 years of space medicine can muster, recovering from extended zero-g remains a tremendous physical challenge. So, is Elon Musk losing his mind by spending more than $10 billion to develop the Starship to colonize Mars? This is when Elon Musk reveals the artificial gravity that will be aboard Starship. It's unlike anything we've ever seen. So let's take our time and find out everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Tesla is to protect life on Earth, SpaceX to extend life beyond. Billionaire Elon Musk's space venture SpaceX aims to build over a thousand starships to transport life to Mars. The Tesla CEO stated that making life multiplanetary will help back up the ecosystems on Earth. He added that apart from humans, no other species can transport life to Mars. Referring to biblical patriarch Noah who built an ark that survived the great flood on Earth, Musk said his Starship models will be modern Noah's Arks that can save life from a calamity on Earth. Making life multiplanetary expands the scope and scale of consciousness. It also enables us to back up the biosphere, protecting all life as we know it from a calamity on Earth, he tweeted. Humanity is life's steward, as no other species can transport life to Mars. We can't let them down, he added. So, what's the plan? Well, Musk replied with, build 1,000 or more starships, 1,000 plus starships to transport life to Mars. Basically, very modern Noah's Arks. A starship consists of two elements, a first stage booster called Super Heavy and an upper stage spacecraft known as the Starship. Especially since Starship and Super Heavy are both designed to be completely and rapidly reusable, both will be powered by SpaceX's new Raptor engine, and it'll be a total of 33 for Super Heavy, with 6 more for Starship. The ship will be capable of launching over 100 tons or 100 people into space at a time. Seeing the giant 120 meter starship standing on the launch pad is like a wonder for humanity, but obviously we all know that this is not enough to get to Mars. As huge and versatile as the spacecraft is, it can't escape the annoying presence of zero gravity. Importantly, travelers to Mars are expected to spend up to 9 months en route. So, how can Elon Musk and SpaceX avoid the problems of no gravity when they are creating missions that might keep travelers away for months, if not years? Well, Musk has recently commented on this when he was pressed about it on Twitter. One of his followers asked a question, has SpaceX ever considered tethering two crew starships to create artificial gravity en route to Mars? Musk's answer was a simple yes. It means that SpaceX has considered tethering crewed starships together and spinning them around the center of that tether to create artificial gravity for crew members on months-long journeys between Earth, Mars, and other planets. Sounds like a pretty crazy and hazardous idea, but how exactly would it work? You might have seen in movies where some futuristic spaceships are built like a giant rotating wheel. This configuration known as the Von Braun Wheel is a concept for a space station that would create artificial gravity by its spin. In fact, it's an idea that you probably have experienced for yourself. If you've ever been on a fair ride that spins around really fast, like those teacups that upset your stomach, then you probably felt centrifugal force, not to be confused with centripetal force. This force pulls us to the outside edge of the ride as it spins and spins. Now, instead of tiny teacups, imagine a much larger spinning vessel, and you can start to understand how an astronaut would experience gravity even in the cold, deep reaches of space. After conducting some research into centripetal force, one idea for creating artificial gravity was to design a hub ship, where the payload bay is filled with a truss that unfolds and deploys robotically, thus serving as the wheel's spokes. 
It would be positioned between two passenger starships and would link up with them during the six plus month long journey to Mars. Once linked up, the passenger ships would swivel around to reorient themselves and fire their thrusters to impart momentum to the wheel. Once enough velocity is generated to simulate Earth normal gravity, the passenger ships would reorient themselves again to face inward towards the hub ship. For the remainder of the journey, those aboard the passenger ships would experience the sensation of being pulled down thanks to the centripetal force created by the rotation of the wheel. So then, how would it work for SpaceX's starship? If two starships were tethered together and spinning around the center of that tether, it would essentially act just like the rotating Von Braun wheel. This way, we can allow astronauts to experience gravity on their long trips to Mars or practically anywhere. If the two ships were tethered around their mated tails, that would create a centrifugal force. The best part about this is that SpaceX can customize the specifics so that those on board could experience the exact amount of gravity that they would feel when they got to Mars. This way, the crew would arrive on the red planet already adjusted to the gravity levels that they're walking into and they will be ready to start their missions right away. The idea of using two ships in a rotating fashion has been around for a long time, with the first recorded example provided by Konstantin Tchaikovsky, one of the founding fathers of rocketry and aeronautics. In 1903, he published a study titled Investigation of Outer Space Rocket Devices, where he suggested using rotational force to create artificial gravity in space. Since then, many variations of this idea have been proposed for space stations and habitats, such as the Von Braun Wheel, the O'Neill Cylinder, and the Stanford Taurus. Some concepts are even being considered for development, such as NASA's Nautilus X Space or the Gateway Foundation's proposal for a commercial space station. Many people have seen it as the most probable, safe, and effective way to deliver artificial gravity. But all in all, is this plan really viable? It seems like it follows basic physics, and it also seems like the fastest way to get the results that Musk and SpaceX need. However, no tests on this method of gravity creation has been conducted. NASA experimented with it in the 1960s, but nothing has been done since, so not even Musk knows how well it would work. Right now, everything is just speculation. Maybe that's why Musk's tweet about the method was so brief and devoid of substance. He realizes how difficult this endeavor will be, and he's probably well aware that it may not work as well as some people believe. It's the best alternative, but only because it's the only one that's feasible and affordable. A starship is indeed an expensive transport, and it takes a lot of effort to build this technological marvel. If they went with this option, then SpaceX will require two for each long journey, which will undoubtedly be even more expensive. However, linking two starships together is the smartest option SpaceX has for creating artificial gravity at the moment, so we can only hope that they will come up with the most effective solution in the future. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Please don't forget to share your ideas in the comment section down below. Everyone's support motivates us to create more quality content, so for that, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.